What's up guys? Welcome back to Sketch This. Today I thought what we would do is a quick tutorial on two-point perspective. Now if you're an artist and you've taken any kind of art class before, you've heard of this. Um, you've heard of one-point perspective, you've heard of perspective in general. Um, in class right now at uh, the school that I'm in, I am doing different studies and different courses to boost my um, degree and boost my talents and stuff as, uh, as an artist. I have done two point perspective, one point perspective, even three point perspective before, but they've, uh, they've suffered. And I thought that today we would do a tutorial together and go through this and I would show you um, a really quick study and try we would try to do something together and see uh, just how well we can do a two-point perspective and uh, achieve a really really interesting um, landscape with maybe a couple of three buildings with some really nice uh, uh, trees and rocks and uh, maybe some really nice landscape with the buildings in the background and, and give a really, really cool aspect ratio and uh, depth of field with this two point perspective. I think it'll really be cool. Um, behind me, you'll see that I'm not in my regular setup here. This is the same room, but before there was a bed here. This is my bedroom. Um, this right here is what I've been working on. This is actually going to become my new art table. This is a, uh, a work in progress. This is kind of why my videos have suffered. Um, this is a 60 by 40 solid wood construction that I have been working on since um, last month actually. Um, so it's been an ongoing thing. I, I, I like doing woodwork and, uh, and all kinds of other stuff on the side along with my artwork. So this is a, uh, a really passion for me as well. So this area right here will become um, a studio. And uh, that's going to be all set up and I'm gonna bring you guys along for that. So this wall here um, will have a shelf and um, some lights above, some lights on each side here this table is actually kind of like a drafting table. It will tilt back and forth, up and down, not back and forth, up and down. And I'm trying to work that out of my head. Um, the mechanism, uh, if you've ever seen the old drafting desks back in the day, they had some really, really amazing mechanisms that uh, that worked that uh, lever action. Amazing designs, amazing engineers back then. So I'm going to bring you guys around and set up here and we're going to get started on this uh, two-point perspective. So let's get started. All right guys, we've got you set up and we're going to get started on this two-point perspective. I've got a 15 by 17 or 10 by 17 um, Carson watercolor I think it's uh, 10 by 17 let's just check it here yeah 10 by 17 this is really really good thick cardstock paper here um, I really enjoy working with this uh, it's got a really nice uh, weight to it, a lot of good texture, so you can get some really neat effects with pencils and stuff. Got my 
straight edge here and um, I wanted to show you some really quick uh, pencils that I've got here. Um, you'll see in another video I've got another thing just like this that's got pins in it but uh, <laughs> guys I I really do love uh, pencils and pens and I probably share this with a lot of people out there a lot of you guys that um, just have a fascination with pens and pencils um, I just love having them and I do use them probably not as much as this but uh, I just like having this arrangement and having them here all in one place all nice and neat um, I really like this brand um, Kimberly they are a really nice pencil um, and they're they're fairly cheap you can get two in a pack so I got two of each hardness of lead and uh, got them stuffed in here this artist loft I've been using them up first that's um, that's a uh, Hobby Lobby brand um, they're okay I guess a pencil is a pencil if you really look at it but um, I guess it's all about um, quality in the end I don't know but um, I just really like the look of the Kimberly and uh, they just feel better when you're when you're working with them for some reason maybe just all in my head but anyway uh, I got this little roll-up deal at Hobby Lobby 2 it's made by Speedball uh, again in this uh, upcoming video for Inktober um, I'll show you the pen version of this and yeah this thing just rolls up it's really cool you just roll it up and um, it's got a little strap on the end that, um, that just snaps to itself like that and you've got a really nice um, holder for like 40 40 some pencils so super nice and uh, this did not come this is not a kit or anything but I also bought one of these this is like a uh, ex pencil extender so like when you get down to something really small just plug that dude in like that and pull that up and now you can use every bit of your pencil all the way down to the very last bit if you can sharpen it which I use like a razor blade sometimes to do that but um, yeah super nice to have these these are really uh, really nice and this is made by generals but anyway let's get into the meat of this video and um, get started on two-point perspective so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a line at the bottom of my page and I'm going to use a really really hard lead for this just as reference I'm going to make reference points and reference lines they're not very dark so that's why I'm using a harder lead so I'm going to be using a 5H for that the harder the lead the higher this number and the H signifier the harder that number or the higher that number the lighter and the harder the lead is when you get into these numbers the B's come on camera focus when you get into these numbers the six B's the more soft the lead is and the darker your line is so let's go ahead and create our reference lines and these can be anywhere on the page you want them to be so there is my my horizon line and I know it's gonna be hard for you guys to see that but um, trust me it's there 
now I'm going to make two points on this horizon line that I just drew. I'm going to make a point out here. It can be anywhere on this horizon line, but preferably you want it to be closer to the edge, closer to the edges of where you're drawing. That way it will give you a lot of free range to create your angles and create your your look that you're going for. So I'm going to make a point here. On this horizon line and then over here on this end of the horizon line I'm going to create a point there. Okay and there are my two vanishing points for my two point perspective. So there is one point this is the horizon line. Vanishing point one. And vanishing point two. Okay. Now, I've got to make a determination of where I want my buildings. So, Let's say that I want the, the front most part of the building. And generally speaking, you would like to have, you don't want it to be dead center. You can, and that's fine. But for interesting purposes, to make it more interesting, you want it off center from the page. So I know that this is 17. So I'm gonna go somewhere around, say, seven inches or seven and a half inches, somewhere around there. And I'm gonna make another point here, a very light point. And then I'm gonna do another line up here the same way. get my numbers lined up here with my little straight edge here. I'm going to go up to the top of the page and I'm going to make just another point. Now these aren't part of the perspective. I'm just drawing two points here so that I can line up my straight edge. So this line right here is going to help me determine the edge of the building. My first building that I want to draw. Now, like I said, I know that's hard to see, but this line right here is just a straight line that I've drawn to give me a reference point for the edge of that building. So now, I know that I want to create like some sort of like ledge or some sort of landscape or something. To go from and kind of want it to be just somewhere in this range and we want to use this two-point perspective and kind of give that effect that this is going off into the distance, so we want to angle it. We want to. We don't want it to be straight on the page. Okay, we want to angle this, kind of from this point up here, or from this area up in here, down to this point. This is going to give that illusion of depth. I'm just adding in some general ideas of this land form. Like I said, again, this is just um, reference lines because I'm using this, um, this 5H pencil here. They're just references. We can put a tree in here close up to really sell that depth and everything. 
do whatever we want to do. All right. So this is the front of the building. So this this edge right here is going to be kind of like the the edge of some front facade or something of this building. So we can say that um, one corner or so of this building is touching the edge of this this bank that we have here or this cliff. So we know that this point right here where this cliff is touching this reference line that's going through the center of our page, okay? And this cliff right here. So that is a connection point to the building. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take our straight edge, okay? And connect one of our reference points from our two point perspective to our horizon line down here up to that line. Just faintly we'll draw that line. And then we can do the same thing over here with this line. We can create another line intersecting with this line over here to our other one point perspective. And extend it on past out here. So now we have two lines that are crossing out that are connecting to those perspective points down here. So this line is coming out, crossing that connection point and, and extending on out. And then the same thing with this one out here. It's crossing through Again, these are reference lines, okay? And this is extending on out. And we're gonna use these lines and many more to create this building. So now we want to add more lines to this reference point over here. And I'm just gonna just keep adding, adding these lines here. some point we can see we will start seeing a building that we we think is interesting to take shape at least we hope we will I'm just making a bunch of reference lines going up into this space that are connecting to that center point where I can make a determination where I think I might want to start cutting in and joining some of these lines together. So basically what you do, after we get a bunch of these other lines in, we can start adding vertical lines just randomly out here in space, up here above the cliff, and then it will start creating straight edges and breaking up the, the parallel lines that we have or the vanishing point line, sorry. And believe it or not, you'll start seeing a, a building take shape or a three-dimensional object take shape. It's very, very cool. really cool and we'll take um, this straight edge here has these um, segment lines in it so I can line those up with the edge of my paper or a previous vertical line that I've already drawn and I can get a pretty true straight line vertical or horizontal on my on my page here so I'm just gonna find one of these little intersecting points here that I have. I'll show you that. You can 
camera will pick that up. One more find one of these little intersecting points here. I'm just gonna pick one. Okay. See we got a bunch of intersecting lines all coming from our vanishing points on each side. Okay. All you know crossing over here on the top page here above this cliff. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking and making vertical lines now through here, through these lines, and hopefully picking some of these intersection points that I just talked about, we'll see some shapes start taking effect. seeing something I'm looking at it and I'm thinking okay yeah I can kind of see what we have here and this is just all up to interpretation you have to um, you have to start making decisions in your own mind of what you see and what you want to um, what to what do you want to come up with what what is in your mind that you think would look would look cool and and just run with it so I'm starting to see um, a really cool form here and I think that um, I think we're gonna run with this this video may end up being a little extensive but again it's a tutorial but uh, I want to show you guys uh, some really cool stuff here and show you examples of, um, of what can be done here. So we're almost at that 30 minute mark, obviously. So I'm going to uh, break away here and um, restart the, the time limit over. We'll have a cup of coffee here and we'll get this thing restarted up and be right back. Okay guys, we are uh, fresh and ready for another good 30 minutes of video and I have um, off camera just worked those lines a little bit better so that uh, we can go in with a 2B now, which is quite a bit darker, not all the way dark on the um, soft scale as far as pencils go. Um, but we are going to use the normal 2B. I think this is like the standard, whatever you get, you know, like pencil pack, whatever, you get like the 2B. This is like what they give re recommendations to take tests with and stuff like that. So most everybody should be familiar with the 2B lead. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna darken all of our lines that we have made all these um, faint crossways marks now that we have got in here um, so that we can actually see um, kind of the building and the shape that um, that we're working with here so um, I'm gonna go with, go ahead first and uh, just roughly sketch out this uh, this cliff here so that we kind of know where we are um, we're at with uh, the edge detail so
All right, so now we can actually see our cliff now. So kind of know where we are with that. All right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and darken in these lines for our building, our shape, so that we can kind of see where we are with that. highlighting all those vertical edges, those vertical lines that I put in that uh, I told you that would um, start allowing you to see your building. When they intersect points, they uh, kind of start putting, putting things in the perspective. And that's what allows you to uh, start seeing Uh, seeing what you need to see. So, really cool. There's a lot of people out there that are really better at this than me. This is like uh, something that I really just wanted to do with you guys and uh, just kind of work through this together. So, hopefully, if you guys are wanting to do this at home, be great just to follow along and stuff um, you can get a lot of really interesting shapes and forms from doing this you can really start getting all kinds of really interesting shapes and I mean just the sky's the limit I'm gonna sharpen my pencil real quick guys this is starting to get dull so all right, now we're going to start cutting in some of the um, the vanishing point lines now. I'm going to show you the verticals now. You can kind of start seeing what we're going with here. You start seeing the building. What we have. And it, as shading and everything starts taking effect and you start really um, getting value placed in there and getting little details added to it, you start really um, seeing the, the finished product. Um, it's, just, it's just amazing that these, these two points here um, allow you to base all these crossing lines it gives you guidelines that's basically what all these are just guidelines to sell an illusion so we're going to go ahead and start adding the um, perspective point lines on this side of the page I'm just trying to get up lined up is close as I can and connecting the vertical lines to my vanishing point lines. That's all I'm doing here. This connected those two vanishing point lines to this point down here. To my vertical lines. Now we actually have a face, a surface that is in perspective. And we're going to continue on. Okay, now we've got all these lines 
connected to this vanishing point we can see here there 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 and there and I've added just a little bit of detail to this front surface because this is going to be kind of like a uh, railing of some kind now we're going to connect everything to this vanishing point which is going to give us the rest of our surfaces to the building And there we have it guys I've connected like I said before I've connected all the vanishing point lines on this side of the vanishing point to all of our verticals on this side and now we can see our building in three point or two point perspective excuse me isn't that amazing and we can take this much, much further, which I probably won't do on camera, um, but just adding in more of these crossing lines from both points of your perspective on top of these surfaces will allow you to add windows, doors, crossing details, um, surface details, just like I did with the guardrail here, and then this um, band for the surface of this concrete wall here, this little band. Um, you can go to your heart's extent on adding detail. And these, like I said, these two points just allow you to um, keep everything in a precise perspective. Everything stays in line as long as you keep your verticals as straight as possible and connect everything to its respective points. Um, you can come out with a very, very believable three-dimensional object as we have here. So I want to thank you guys for sticking around, watching the video. Please um, hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button on your way out and click that bell for notifications. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you for watching the video and Stay tuned because Inktober is right around the corner and there'll be, should be, a video every day for the month of October. So, thanks guys. See you soon. Bye for now.